Reader and Stream, and this is a mini-sode. Today's mini-sode is called The Duelists, Ridley Scott's other Napoleon film. I was inspired to talk about this today because of the impending theatrical release of Ridley Scott's Napoleon. And this isn't the first time that Scott has played around in the Napoleonic sandbox. His very first feature film was 1977's The Duelists. It's a film I have a lot of admiration for. It's among the director's best movies. And by all accounts, it's a much, much better movie than 2023's Napoleon. The Duelist demands satisfaction. Honor for him is an appetite, an obsession to kill. No apology is accepted, no quarter given. Only death will satisfy honor. You have insulted me! I have strained my patience in order not to do so. Now I say this not having seen the film, but I just started getting kind of some off vibes from this one from the very beginning of the movie's marketing cycle. It all started with the rewriting of history towards Napoleon's wife, Josephine. The film blog writers of the internet did what they did do best, and they kind of placed an inflated emphasis on the figure's importance to this story. They recasted her as some sort of secret military genius who's actually making all the strategic military decisions behind the scenes, the sort of woman behind the man, as it were. And of course, you know, this is not true. This is patently false. Josephine had to be this incredible force of nature. I found her the most remarkable, interesting person. She was iconic, and I felt really honored to try and inhabit her. You are nothing without me. And then, a couple weeks ago, Ridley Scott had a bit of a senior moment in which he went off on historian Dan Snow during an interview after being made aware of a video in which Snow pointed out all the historical inaccuracies that existed in just the movie's trailer. Scott's big takeaway for Snow was basically, get a life, dude, and he kind of moved on from there. But it still kind of raised a bit of a red flag. And now, as I film this very mini-sode, we're five days before the film's release. Reviews have started to hit the web, the reactions are mixed. Negative reviews basically call Napoleon's portrayal a petulant man-child. They say the movie overall is very boring. And again, they call out the historical inaccuracies. Now, why am I bringing this all up? It's basically because despite this film being sold as the next big historical epic from the director of Gladiator and Kingdom of Heaven, it seems really to be anything but. What we have instead is a film that doesn't really care to play towards its target demographic, a film that's very careless with its portrayal of history, and a film that's been test screened into oblivion, trying way too hard to appeal to the most amount of people as possible. Now this is in stark, stark contrast to the care, the detail, the fresh-faced directing feat, that is, The Duelists. Again, this film was Ridley Scott's first feature. It was made in 1977, just two years after Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon. And I can't help but feel as if The Duelist was made in, in response to Barry Lyndon, or at the very least, out of a great deal of respect and reverence. The films are very, very similar, most notably in the look, but The Duelist is actually based on the Joseph Conrad short story, which itself is based on the real life account of two Napoleonic officers who dueled each other over 30 times over 19 years. Sometimes they use swords, sometimes they use sabers, sometimes they were mounted on horses, and eventually they fought with pistols. Pharaoh intends to kill you. Gentlemen, prepare to advance. Nobody understands why you fight with Arnold. I believe you feed your spite on him with no more sense than a nasty, blood-sucking louse. Charge! 
If he so earnestly desires to kill me, he will kill me. Damn it. Kill him. Keep away from him. Keep ahead of him. Put your trust in Bonaparte. The two officers are played brilliantly by a young Harvey Keitel and a young Keith Carradine. Keitel is a hot-headed madman that instigates the initial duel, and Carradine is the aristocratic, far more sane career man that gets dragged into Keitel's crazy world. Over 16 years, these military men have intersecting lives and they basically follow the ascent and the fall of Napoleon Bonaparte. And I really can't overstate how great this movie is. Its attention to detail is unparalleled, especially towards the seemingly small things like the evolution of military garb over 16 years or the French military etiquette of the early 1800s. There's a grand feel to this movie such as in the sets or the on-location filming. And this is all sort of flying in the face of the film's budget, which was under a million dollars. The general has received too deep an injury. I see. I will meet you tomorrow at sunrise here. Sabres, whatever you choose. Pistols. Pistols? I think the biggest success of this film lies in the story. The Duelist is basically a portrait of obsession that is unable to be quenched, that eventually it basically consumes a person. And it's also about two men that have an unspoken respect for each other despite constantly being at odds with one another. It's really not a theme that you really see much anymore. Um, and it's, it's just kind of novel in this day and age. It's easily Scott's most thoughtful, insular movie, and it's not really something he's even tried to replicate any time recently. His career has kind of devolved into these big budget, sort of good, sort of bland ensemble pieces and he just hasn't done anything like this in a long, long time. Oh my God, I'll chase you down the street like a chicken. You will chase me nowhere. I will be delighted to fight you at the first opportunity. You fight now. At this moment, I'm here on duty and you are under arrest. Now! For dueling, you ape. Now! You fight now. Where? In the guard. Oh, oh, oh. Seconds. You want second? I'll find you second. That's The Duelists. Um, if you don't mind a handful of ad breaks, you can watch it for free on Pluto TV. Otherwise, there's also Canopy if you have a library card. And I also saw you could get a digital copy of the movie for $4.99 on Apple. And if you're like me, you're gonna watch this movie many, many times over the next number of years. So, you know, spring for owning it. Pay the $4.99 to own it. You're, you're, you're not gonna regret it, I promise. For us here at Theater and Stream, um, we'll be back next Monday with another full episode. It's still kind of up in the air as to what we'll be covering. It, it may be Napoleon, it may not be. I'll be seeing the film either way so that I can talk about it on the podcast. Um, and it's just kind of a movie I'd like to have an educated opinion about. But that's all for me. Uh, please subscribe if you are liking what we're doing here in our little corner of YouTube. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching.